I'm Dr. Randy Martin. We're here at the 2023 AATS Montreal Conclave, as you can easily hear behind me. But robotic surgery is really an impressive advance in Montreal health surgery. I'm thrilled to be joined by two experts in this, Stephanie Mix and Arnor Gerson. Great. Thank you both for joining. Thank you for having us. So this is, you know, Arnor, I was saying, and Stephanie, I was saying that I was surprised to find that now robotic surgery makes up 14, 15 percent of all mitral surgical procedures. Yeah. Why is it showing an increase in its uptake? There are a lot of factors to the uptick. I think one is just the pure accumulation of time and experience because it's now been around for about 20 years. And there are many, many, many large series showing excellent results. And so the, it's kind of stood the test of time and increased adoption. I also do think that the advent of transcatheter technologies has changed patient expectations as to what they're looking for in procedures. And I would say that the adoption of robotic surgery in other areas, like general surgery and urologic surgery, has increased the familiarity of trainees with the platform. And so there's much more comfort and familiarity with it, and they want to adopt it as they make their own practices. Yeah, and there have been, been tremendous technical advances in the, in the mechanics of it, of how you do it, the, you know, the amount of rotation of your, you have and all the instruments. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I mean, there has been, you know, it used to be, I think, the most technological advancement in the new robots was maybe about 10 years ago. And, but there is uh, certainly new enthusiasm for developing new robotic systems, right. although not specifically for cardiac surgery. So I think that really has helped. Uh, and, I, you know, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Nick that really there has been enthusiasm on multiple different levels. What is, I think it's also, there's very lot of enthusiasm in the younger generations and kind of maybe we could qualify as the mid-generations of cardiac surgeons who really want to really kind of advance this technology. The big rub initially when it came out, it was really driven by the patient wanting no meat and steronomy. And, and you know, saying that this wasn't open heart surgery. Right. I'm just gonna, these guys are gonna go in here and the gals are gonna go in here and do it. And, right. But you know, Excuse me, but you got to be on the heart line. Yeah, it's still open heart surgery. I always am very careful to explain that. Was, that. that was a big, because I, being in the echo world forever, I was, and I was very aggressive at trying to send asymptomatic, but patients who their heart wasn't asymptomatic for early surgery. And living in Atlanta with Doug and everything, patients always wanted to have, what about robotic? I don't want to have a steronomy. So that, and I think you're right that the transcatheter, the tear therapy really started pushing it. Where, where do you think we are with robotic mitral valve surgery now? In other words, is it comparable to what can be done with open? I would say yes, it is comparable. I mean, it's been shown in many large series to have the same efficacy. There's even now echo data out, a decade of echo data corroborating that. The same complication rates, no increase in complication rates. So I would say that it's equivalent to conventional surgery in terms of outcomes, but with benefits in terms of improved cosmesis, shorter length of stay, et cetera. And it's across all comers of mitral valve? I don't mean a severe rheumatic. I think the, you mean, it's all, you know, also evidence for pretty good series for large centers who do this a lot, that you can do complicated cases. You can do high-risk patients. You know, you have to be somewhat selective, of course, how you do this, and it's not applicable to everybody. I think it is important to select the right patients for this. It's not particularly the pathology of the mitral valve. I think any type of mitral valve can be repaired with a robot, but it's merely some other issues specifically related to atherosclerotic disease and stuff like that in order to do femoral cannulation. And the maze procedures are comparable. You do maze with the same frequency as you did with open? You can do maze with the operating robot. There's no doubt about it. I would say it's comparable. I think the limiting step is not the technology because the, the robot is just a tool. It's really the surgeon's facility with doing the procedure. So a surgeon who feels that they can repair a valve open should also be able to do it robotically. So you're finding younger surgeons now are, are more and more interested in this. What's their training like? Do they need to be well-versed in open repair before they do robotic? It's interesting. I think, you know, one of the benefits that has, hasn't been talked too much about in mean, robotic mitral valve, it's really a great tool to teach people to do mitral valve repairs. Because they could see. Could see they it. They could both see. Everybody can see you know, it. It's like there's no hiding right. from it. You know, one of the things that's impressive about being in David's ORs is they've got this 
you know, scope to yeah. phenomenal and everybody can see stuff, but in robotic, <laughs> everybody can see and you're in 3D, 4D, 10G, right. whatever it is. <laughs> everybody can see, anesthesia can see. The anesthesiologists love the they procedure are. because they've just done the TEE and they like to see how good their pictures really were. You know, so I think it is also important. I mean, most of us, I think, who have been able to develop successful program, we just don't come out of a fellowship and start doing it. It takes preparations, takes time. You do need to know how to repair the mitral valve, and there's a certain number of experience and repetition you have to do. But I think if we set the certain platform that we need a uh, groundwork that needs to be made for the, the trainees. There's no reason that maybe a few years after they come out in a supportive environment, they should. But if you take a cardiac surgical fellow into your program, they could come in and start learning robotic right away? Or do they, that, my question is, do they go through, you know, the historical way of learning how to do a sternotomy for... Oh, they multiple. typically, fresh trainee needs to learn it. a lot of other stuff okay. before they can start doing a robotic surgery. But they can start with, it's all graded experience. So a fresh trainee might be able to help with the peripheral cannulation for cardiopulmonary bypass. Right. There are discrete steps that each level of trainee can undertake for that level of training. Okay, that's, that's really what I was, I was getting at. What do you think the future is for? Uh, yeah, I think in many ways, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do other valves, you know, aortic valves. Your placement is kind of developing, although obviously in mean, the area of Tavers may never get there. But, 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 right. but, but, but you know, I, I, I you know, I think there's no reason why, like, significant portion of mitral valve operation should be done robotic. Mac, significant Mac you can handle? I think you do a limited amount of Mac. You can Limited Mac. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mac uh, is challenging Mac under, is any, any, under any circumstance. What about the tricuspid valve? It's easily approachable with a robot. Right. It's, it's okay. not difficult. So you can do You, you can do it. Do that, okay. Is there any class of patients who you think are ideal for a robot? Typically, the ideal robotic candidate is relatively young, pretty thin. Pretty thin. <laughs> As somebody said. Pretty healthy. Were, were you doing all models? On yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the typical. Yeah. When I see a patient like that, I say to the patient, oh, you just look like a robotic candidate. But it's not only that. You know, obese patients typically do very well with the robot. And in fact, the robot in many ways is a little easier under certain circumstances in obese patients than a sternotomy approach. The reason I'm thinking at Emory, where I was, and Doug was across town, the only robot we had was in urology and some in OB, you know, and we couldn't get the, the guys, you know, they said it's too much, too much stuff, you know, we did, and the upkeep of the thing is to right. catch and all that stuff. But that's the migration. And I mean, there really has been a reinvigoration of of robotic, you know, and as you say, the efficacy of it, the, the data is there. The, obviously, the patients like it. They think they like it. If they like it, you know, they, so. d they definitely do. They think they like it, and, and they, they do like, like it. it. They do like it. And that, <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's an exciting advance. I think it's it's wonderful that you're pushing the frontiers. As you look at the safety and the outcomes of this, I know I was talking to Vinay Badwar with this paper that was in Jack about safety and outcomes of mitral valve degenerative surgery. And it's, you know, it's got incredible morbidity and mortality benefits and is really very safe. You've done data like that for robotics yeah, I mean, with SCS? Yeah, we used, uh, this was presented the last SCS last January and then the publication will be coming out soon. But, you know, it really demonstrated, you know, we compared robotic cases to sternotomy, robotic cases to thoracotomy, after trying to do various exclusion criteria, looking at primary mitral regurgitation. And it's pretty clear that it's at least as safe, and it seems to be as good, although this is only short-term data, but conversion to replacement is much lower in the robotic cases, and degree of MR in, uh, uh, is the same, but you know, conversion to mitral valve replacement less is in robotic. Obviously, there is an inherent selection bias that we probably cannot control, but at least I think it's pretty clear that robotic is as safe and as effective as turnout. That's, that's a, Obviously, it has to be done in the right hands by the right people who set it up and train it properly. So this is for somebody, not somebody who wants to just be a hotshot robotic surgeon, right? I mean, you've got to have... You need to be dedicated to it. Should it's, there be reference centers for robotic surgery? That's a good question. I don't think that there are enough places that we would need a reference center classification. But as time goes forward, if it becomes more and more common, then absolutely, I think reference centers are always a good idea. I think that what tends to happen is surgeons or centers 
they focus, they become good at something specific, you know, with astronomy, thoracotomy, robotic. And I think the main issue is to, you know, no matter how you do, you got to do a good report. Absolutely. The reason I was mentioning is that, you know, I remember in, in a lot of times people were saying, well, this is a marketing tool for the, you know, the institution to get get more patients and stuff. And, and there are billboards that, that attest of to that. But I think you're right. I mean, I do think that it ought to be people like yourselves who are very experienced and very have great integrity and, and interested in advancing the field and the safety and the outcome of the patients ought to grow and be doing the vast majority of it. If I'm looking at, let's say I don't have expertise in Atlanta, Georgia, but if I'm looking, what kind of patients should I be looking for? Let's forget the patient asking for it, but what kind of patients should I be looking for anywhere for consideration for robotic? Anybody, Anybody who has degenerative do. mitral valve disease. Okay. Anyone is a potential candidate. It's up to the robotic surgeon to put them through the imaging algorithm and decide if they're actually appropriate because that's also part of being a robotic surgeon is knowing when it's appropriate and when it's not. Yeah, Mark has a good algorithm. Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I've been raised on that algorithm. I know <laughs> sure it by heart. <laughs> but, but it's, and so, so does Arner. And that's something that people, even, even people who are advocates of open approach are really very impressed with that. And I think that's just showing good good medicine and i'm excited i think if it's an exciting time the mitral valve repair and tricuspid valve i think it's gonna be really exciting totally agree thank likewise you for joining thank, thank you for having us thank you and you know stay tuned this is an evolving feel thank you thank you